Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Exchange of Health Information. This is Lecture C, Advancing Health Information Exchange Through Meaningful Use and Direct. The learning objectives for the Exchange of Health Information Unit are, number one, to list the quality problems in healthcare that health information exchange is intended to remediate. Two, describe the nature of health information exchange technology assets that Health Information Exchange is designed to interconnect. Number three, explain the motivations, capabilities, and challenges of Health Information Exchange organizations. Number four, explain the motivations, capabilities, and challenges of using meaningful use and direct to advance Health Information Exchange. And number five, describe the future directions for Health Information Exchange. The first part of this lecture will discuss how the Meaningful Use Program has been used to advance health information exchange. The Meaningful Use Program is also known as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services EHR Incentive Program. It was created by the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health High Tech Act, which was part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARA, of 2009. The Meaningful Use Program said that physicians and hospitals could receive funding if they demonstrated the, quote, meaningful use, unquote, of certified electronic health record technology. The purpose of the funding was to offset the costs of the EHR system that the provider organization would need to purchase. The Meaningful Use Program was divided into three stages. The intent of the first stage was to increase the rates with which electronic data was captured and shared. The purpose of the second stage was to advance clinical processes. The purpose of the third stage was to improve outcomes. At each stage of meaningful use, there are objectives that providers must demonstrate that they are complying with in order to receive their incentive payments. As an example, in the first stage of meaningful use, the objectives are listed here and on subsequent slides. Eligible providers and hospitals had to meet all these objectives to qualify for incentive payments under the Meaningful Use Program. Some objectives are use computerized order entry for medication orders, implement drug and drug and drug and allergy checking in the systems, generate and transmit prescriptions electronically, record demographics electronically, and maintain a problem list. Additional objectives are maintain a medication list, maintain an allergy list, chart vital signs in the electronic record, record smoking status in the electronic record, and implement one decision support rule. More objectives in Stage 1 of Meaningful Use include report ambulatory quality measures to CMS or to states, provide patients with portal access, give clinical summaries to patients for each electronic visit, and protect the data in the systems. And in addition, under Stage 1, the systems had to have the capability to exchange key clinical information electronically between providers and patient authorized entities. This capability had to be demonstrated, but it did not have to be put into routine use as part of the Stage 1 activities. The Meaningful Use Program has been associated with an increase in the adoption of electronic health records, which was the intent of the program. This was most important in the ambulatory setting. There are various definitions for an electronic health record system that can be used when these analyses of adoption are performed but by several measures, the rate of adoption has increased. The National Center for Health Statistics published that some data between 2006 and 2013, the adoption by ambulatory providers of any EHR system rose from 29.2% to 78.4%, and what was deemed as a basic system, the adoption rose from 10.5 to 48.1% over that same time period. With respect to interoperability, although Meaningful Use Stage 1 was associated with an increase of adoption of electronic health record systems, there was concern that the EHRs that were being adopted did not have sufficient interoperability-related capabilities. 
In 2013, six United States senators authored a report suggesting that the meaningful use, quote, lacked a clear path towards interoperability, unquote. In Stage 2 of Meaningful Use, there were additional health information exchange-related objectives that were intended to further interoperability. One objective was that the patient had the ability to either view online, download, or transmit their health information. This was an objective that was created for the Stage 2 of Meaningful Use. Up until October 2015, the specific objective was that 5% of the physician's patients would need to do this. But in October 2015, that goal was reduced to just one patient, meaning that the physician would be in compliance with the meaningful use objective even if only one of their patients used that capability. The challenge here was that getting the patients to do something outside of the clinical environment was beyond the provider's control. That is the reason why the goal was reduced from 5% of patients to just one patient. Another objective in Stage 2 of Meaningful Use that was intended to advance health information exchange was that upon a transition from one setting to another that the provider would be required to provide a summary of care record electronically to the next provider of care. This had to be done for 10% of transitions and referral situations. There were several challenges to this. One, even if the provider had the capability to do this information exchange and was motivated to do it, the location to which the provider would want to send the information may not have the ability to receive the data. Another challenge was to create workflows that would explicitly document the next provider of care. If you do not know who the next provider of care is, it is not possible to transmit the information. Some of those workflow challenges interfered with the goal. Also, although it may be possible to assemble all of the patient's data, it may be that not all of the patient's data was required. In fact, sending all of the data might have distracted from the really important information that needed to be transmitted. So there are several challenges related to this objective as well. However, these two objectives that were described are important capabilities for exchanging data, whether it is giving the patient the ability to view, download, or transmit their information, or providing a summary of care record to the next provider of care. Currently, in New York State, the adoption of the Regional Health Information Organization, or RIO, technology has varied. There has been more adoption in the upstate region than in the downstate metropolitan region. Because of these implementation challenges, the use of RIOs as a routine part of care is not yet widespread, even where RIOs have been created. In October 2015, the Stage 2 Health Information Exchange objectives were modified so that the view, download and transmit measure required only one patient rather than 5% of patients. Stage 2 will be the target for 2016 and 2017. To qualify for the incentive payments, healthcare providers will need to meet those objectives during those time periods. In Stage 3 of Meaningful Use, there are additional health information exchange objectives. The patient must be able to download data from an electronic health record to another application, which will facilitate health information exchange. 25% of patients must send or receive a secure email, which will increase communication with providers. The email can contain health information and so advance health information exchange. Transition of care summaries must be received and incorporated for 40% of patients. These transitions of care summaries must be reconciled upon receipt. These Stage 3 objectives will further advance health information exchange. It must be noted that these objectives can change due to congressional action. Other health information exchange objectives in Stage 3 include increased reporting to public health agencies around immunizations, syndromic surveillance, case reporting, and cancer registries. Additionally, data from non-clinical settings like personal devices, like digital pedometers, must be received for 5% of patients. Stage 3 would represent increased health information exchange capabilities. 
Stage 3 will not be required until 2018, and the final regulations are scheduled to be released at some point in 2016. In summary, with respect to the EHR Incentive Program, or Meaningful Use, the focus has been on the adoption of EHRs. Health Information Exchange and Interoperability have been on the radar, but these are secondary. Adoption of EHRs have largely been achieved among ambulatory physicians, although there are still ways to go. Some health information exchange goals have been achieved, but the scenarios that are important in healthcare are not yet enabled. The EHR incentive program is still an important lever for moving beyond the status quo and helping to advance health information exchange, especially with opportunities in meaningful use stage three. One of the objectives under Stage 2 Meaningful Use was to transfer a summary of care record electronically from one provider to another. The method that has been developed for accomplishing this is what is known as Directed Exchange, or DIRECT for short. Directed Exchange is pushing clinical data from an EHR system to another EHR system. The basic idea behind DIRECT is that sending and receiving gateways can be added onto the EHR systems, which would be relatively inexpensive software enhancements added to the EHR systems. These gateways would allow one system to assemble certain data from the EHR, maybe from summary data or lab results or other clinical data, and send them in an email type approach to another EHR system. Examples of scenarios in which this would be useful would be transferring data from a primary doctor to a specialist in a referral scenario and reporting to public health agencies or non-acute facilities. There are several distinctions between the direct model of health information exchange and the RIO model we discussed in another lecture. One of the advantages of the direct model is that no master patient index is needed. With direct, the receiving provider is obliged to link the incoming data to the relevant patient record. Also, the use of direct does not require a separate organization to be established, so complex governance issues can be avoided. In addition, direct does not require new privacy models because existing privacy frameworks govern the transfer of clinical data between individual providers. In direct, data is sent from one provider to another provider. As a contrast, RIOs are large networks of clinical data where a provider could have access to a substantial amount of data from all the other providers in the community, and so new privacy models were necessary. In general, directed exchange is felt to be simpler than the Regional Health Information Organization approach to health information exchange. However, there are some components that are needed for directed exchange that still require some attention. First, directories of providers are needed. For example, if I'm a primary care physician and I want to refer to a cardiologist, I need to be able to look up that cardiologist in a directory somewhere, so I know where to send the data. Some kind of trust fabric is needed. For example, if I'm sending data to a cardiologist, I need to be sure that it is indeed a cardiologist that is going to receive that data. Similarly, the cardiologist receiving some clinical data from me, the primary care physician, has to be confident that the sender of the message is in fact who he or she purports to be. Identity assurance, auditing, and those capabilities need to be present. Similarly, there are technical issues with these data transfers. They need to be robust and timely. These incoming messages need to be integrated with local messaging workflows. Also, the message has to be linked to the right patient. Under Stage 2, the objective is to use direct, so Stage 2 meaningful use will help to advance directed exchange. This concludes Lecture C of Exchange of Health Information. In summary, although meaningful use was focused on increasing adoption of EHRs, some aspects of the program were intended to advance health information exchange. Some of the features in meaningful use stage two, intended to advance health information exchange, have been difficult for healthcare providers to adopt. Meaningful use stage three will try to advance health information exchange further. Direct is a set of protocols that allow data to be transmitted from one provider to another, 
but adoption of direct is not yet widespread.